For this video, I decided to ask some of the YouTube mates I respect the most to reveal the biggest editing mistakes they see small YouTubers making that are costing you views. Starting with Rob from vidIQ, and when I talked to him, he pointed out something critical, and it all has to do with your hook, which is jargon for the first 30 seconds of the video. YouTube even has an analytic for this to show you the percentage drop off of people in that first 30 seconds. So it is clearly very important. I know as a creator myself, that you have a finite amount of time when it comes to editing. But what I would encourage you to do is front load your editing efforts into the beginning of the video. So what exactly does front loading your video editing efforts mean? Well, let's say that on average, you can commit about five hours of your week to editing a YouTube video. And your goal is to post one YouTube video a week, meaning you can afford to spend five hours editing each video you post. So let's say their videos tend to be about five minutes. They have five hours of editing time. So they're gonna spend about one hour editing each minute of video footage. But when you think about it, the majority of your viewers are all watching at the beginning of your video. So for the example I've just mentioned, instead of spending one hour editing each minute of footage in your five minute video, you should spend two and a half hours intensely editing the first one minute of your video and then spend your remaining two and a half hours editing the remaining four hours of video. I often spend hours on those first 10 to 15 seconds of my videos. But after hearing this advice, a lot of creators accidentally end up making their videos worse. And then they throw their laptop out the window in frustration, which then hits and kills a random pedestrian, and then they're imprisoned for manslaughter and live the rest of their days behind bars. So if you don't want to spend your days in prison, you need to realize that there's a big difference between front loading your video editing efforts and just dumping three terabytes of dank memes into the first 30 seconds of your video. My friend Nate, who is famous for his video editing, says one of the biggest editing mistakes small creators make is over editing. So it's a very common misconception amongst YouTubers that more editing equals a better video, which is simply not the case. Most people, like they get overwhelmed essentially. Even the younger audiences get overwhelmed with more and more editing. Honestly, editing should always be a supplement to your video, not the star of the show. The star of the show is always the value that you provide in your content. So only edit as much as you need to. So if you're creating an entertainment video and more editing makes the video more entertaining, Nate approves. If you're creating an informational video and more editing makes it easier for people to learn what you're teaching them, Nate approves. But if you turn your editing timeline into a game of Tetris that doesn't add any real value, Nate will personally come to your house and delete your project files. That's enough. So what are some practical ways you can actually make your edits better without over editing? Well, my friend Nate has some words of wisdom. Oh, there are two of them. Let's say you're doing a talking head or something where you're, you're using your voice to narrate something and you have multiple takes and maybe you repeat yourself a couple of times and you don't trim off that second or that half second in between takes, it just grates on me. It's it's awful uh, because it, it comes across as really awkward. So for example, if I come to my video editing software and import this raw footage from a previous video I created, as you can see in my waveforms here, I stop and start talking relatively frequently because I can barely string a sentence together. I know the cat's out of the bag. So what happens is often my editors or more recently it's been AI, but we'll talk more about that in another video, cut out all of the silences and stitch the video together to trick you into thinking I can actually speak extemporaneously. But the mistake a lot of small YouTubers make, if we zoom in on these clips here, you can see that at the end of this clip on the left hand side, our waveform goes down as I say my last word, then there's a little pause and then my waveform goes up when we transition into the next clip. Now that little pause, even though it's just a tiny bit of silence, breaks the flow of the video and it makes it feel unnatural and awkward. Here's what it sounds like. Now, I know this is the part where I should be a good YouTuber and draw out the whole video so that you only find out what that actual mistake is like right at the end. But I'm just gonna reveal what it is right now. So what we actually wanna do is trim off the ends of these clips and put them close enough together so that that awkward pause isn't there. Now, sometimes you can just do this with what's called a jump cut, which is where I literally just have one piece of footage back to back with another like this. But sometimes, especially with talking head videos, this doesn't work very well. Because for example, sometimes my facial expressions might be a bit weird in between transitions because I haven't finished fully speaking the word. And so to fix this, we can do what's called a J or an L cut. What you're gonna do is you're gonna separate your audio from your video track. On Premiere, you can do it by clicking on this track, holding your Alt key and then dragging it in. Now you can see that I can adjust the length of my video track separately from my audio track. Then what I'm gonna do is drag this over here like this and join these together. And so what we're trying to do is use the audio from the first clip to transition to the next clip. This here is called an L cut, as you can see by the shape. If it's still jarring or doesn't work, we can do a J cut, which is just the opposite of an L cut. 
So something like this might sound better. Let's take a look. You only find out what that actual mistake is like right at the end. I'm just gonna reveal what it is right now. Now, if it does sound a bit unnatural, all you have to do is experiment with the exact spacing here. But usually something like what I've just done here works pretty well. But before you go adding a bunch of effects and pattern interrupts to your video, you need to be careful because it's very easy to get this wrong. And a place so many people get this wrong is your sound design. And my friend Ed has noticed a lot of creators making this mistake. So in nature, a whoosh sound, for example, will never sound the same each time. So what people tend to do is they have one sound effect, like a and they use it to work with movement and they use the same one. And to the viewer, something just feels a bit off. So you only need three, it could be like a <laughs> it would make such a difference just alternating them. I think I'm gonna use Ed's whoosh sound effects for the rest of this video. Now, as Ed mentioned, a lot of pro sound effects packs will come with multiple variations of the same sound effect. But if you don't have that luxury, you're in luck. To save you the pain of searching for sound effects, I'm gonna give you my 200 sound effects pack for free. Normally it's $35, but if you go to the link in the description of this video, you'll hit a page that looks like this. And all you have to do is enter your email address and I'll send you access to my 200 sound effects pack for free. The next thing I'd say is when people use the wrong music for the tone. So if you are in a part of your video that is supposed to be exciting and you're using a track that's kind of slow. This is the most expensive firework in the entire world and it cost me over $160,000. Feels disjointed for the viewer. And on the same side of it, if you are just talking in kind of a monotone way and the music's really upbeat, you need to make sure that the edit and the tone of your voice match to tell the right kind of story. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. So that's a big mistake is not understanding really how to use music. And my friend Nate, who you met earlier, has a similar pet peeve. Uh, this happens a lot of times when I'll see people come to me and they'll say, you know what? I just felt like uh, it was a little bit slow. So I just put some upbeat music in there. Music should not be used that way. Music is used to enhance what is already good with the pacing or the energy of a video. And if you're thinking of music as a way to patch up or bandage something that's dragging, I would prefer that you re-record it. The principle here is we want the audio and video pacing to sync up or else something will feel off and you'll lose viewers. But as my friend Nick shared with me, music and sound effects aren't the only things you need to think about. My pet peeve is when people are using B-roll or graphics on the screen that are not relevant to what it is that they're talking about. There's nothing worse than watching a video and having a bunch of things showing up on the screen that are not related to what the content creator is sharing or showing because it makes everything confusing and kind of leaves you thinking, like, does that even, like, what are they? If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. And speaking of things that really bug me and kill your views, my mate Robert hit on something which, if I catch you doing it after this video, I will personally fly to your house and do this to your computer. <laughs> He explains it here. The number one editing mistake that I see people make over and over again, especially when it comes to YouTube Shorts creators, is they have text on the screen that's covering the title. This makes it absolutely impossible to read the title, makes it absolutely impossible to read the text that's on the screen, or they'll choose text that's like, has absolutely no contrast to the background in which they actually have the text. And again, it makes the same effect. If it makes it too hard to read it, and it doesn't look pleasing to the eye, I think so many people just end up swiping away. I especially see this with people that are trying to be like, aesthetically pleasing and they're wearing a pink shirt and they have pink text across it and it just makes it absolutely impossible to read and really hard to look at. Now I'm sure you can see the problem here and there are three main ways that we can fix this. The first is you can add a very heavy what we call stroke which is basically an outline around your text. The most common examples of this are where people use white text and then add a black stroke. You can also try using an effect called the drop shadow. It's going to add a well, shadow behind your text. It's not as harsh as the stroke. It can distinguish it just that extra little bit that it needs. And the third popular way to do this is by adding an actual rectangular background behind your text. Now that people can actually see the text you're using in your videos, my mate JV, who's actually the senior editor for this channel you're watching right now, had a great tip for small YouTubers who want to get more views. So it took me quite a while to learn this, but if you're not building your own assets library or creating your own presets, then you're wasting a lot of time. Basically, an asset library library is an assortment of music, b-roll, graphics, and memes that you can simply drag and drop into your video project to speed up your workflow. So here are some good resources to help you get started. First up, we got Rely's editing pack. It's got some cool sound effects, memes, and green screen videos. Next up is Ecolu's editing pack, which has some funny clips but also has a Premiere Pro preset file that has a lot of cool effects. Next up is Premiere Composer by Mr. 
Mr. Horse. I only edit using Premiere Pro and After Effects, but this plugin is insanely useful and 100% free. It has a bunch of cool text presets, transitions, but here's the game changer. It has this user library feature where you can add your own asset folders, access them within Premiere Pro, and just drag them into your project. Now the video is almost over, but I have one more big mistake that I really want to talk to you guys about. One, because I like the sound of my own voice. Not really. But two, because it really frustrates me when you guys do this. It's something that is done regardless of the style of video, whether you're doing talking head, whether you're doing gaming, and that is not directing the eye of your viewer. So the human eye and mind can only properly focus on one object at a time. And your YouTube video isn't one object. Your YouTube video transports them into a little world where there are multiple different objects to focus on on the screen. And sometimes, especially if there's a lot going on or there's something subtle that happens, it can be really easy for your viewers to miss that thing. And so you wanna make sure that throughout your entire video, there's always a primary point of focus that your viewers' eyes are being clearly drawn to. So you might notice, for example, in this video, whenever I talk about something specific, like a small setting you need to click on, I might pop that setting out. I might end indicate that setting with an arrow or a circle. And when I say I, my editor will actually do this, so I can't take the credit, but you get the idea. And this isn't just applicable to tutorial videos like mine. Even a random IRL funny moments video like this one. We can see the funny moment happens, but if you weren't paying close attention to the clip, you might have missed it because it was quite small and hard to see. So instead of just playing this clip in their compilation, what I would actually encourage this YouTuber to do would be to zoom in or to indicate the dog so that all of the viewers' minds are directed to the exact thing they should be paying attention to and everyone is following along with the story. And if you can just get all of the things we talked about in this video right, by the way, massive thanks to everyone here for sharing their insights. They're all legends in their own right. I'll link their channels below. If you can just master these things, your videos will get so much better. Your retention will go up and that's gonna lead to you getting more views. But that leads us to a big concern a lot of people have when it comes to video editing on YouTube and that is time. Video editing is quite time intensive. If you wanna create a good video, you have to spend a lot of time editing that video and not all of us have the luxury of being full-time YouTubers. So if time is something you struggle with, check out the video on screen. I'm gonna show you what is probably my favorite AI video editing tool right now. It helps me automatically edit massive chunks of my video and save so much time. I promise you, you're gonna love it. So check it out, I'll see you there.